Hello, and welcome to this presentation on how to use census records, genealogical records, and old maps to learn more about your ancestors. So where did this presentation come from? Well, here's a photo of my dad, John Polchinski, in 1925, when he was seven years old. So who would not want to learn more about this guy's family? Here we'll use my dad's family to illustrate how to use census records, genealogical records, and old maps to learn more about our ancestors. We will start our investigation using census records. Since my dad's photo comes from 1925, let's start with a 1930 census record from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where we see my dad at age 11, living at 756 10th Avenue. Now, before proceeding, it's interesting to note that in 1930, there were 14 people all living together in the same house with my dad. Given the times, this is really not all that surprising, but since this presentation is about learning more about our ancestors, we are already starting to get a feel for how many of our Polish ancestors lived at this time. Okay, the census record shows my dad, John, living with his dad, Tom, who was living with his brother, Frank. Who we don't see is John's mother and Tom's wife, Katarzyna Konieczny, because she died in 1927. But what we do see is that also living in the same house were several of Katarzyna's brothers and sisters, which gives a bit more of a picture of the family. But really, so what? I actually knew all of the people on this census record, although I didn't know they all lived in the same house. So what other information can we get about our ancestors by examining census records? On the page of the census record where we see my dad and his family, there are two family names that I seem to recall having seen somewhere on my family tree, namely the Luchaks or Wuchaks and Liberatskis. Since the Polchinskis, Konyechnys, Wuchaks, and Liberatskis all lived within a few houses of each other, it made me wonder who these other people were and how they were all related. And seeing that the Luchak and Liberatsky household heads were born in Poland, finding out more about who these people were promised to help me learn more about my ancestors and where they came from. What we will now do is switch from census records to genealogical records to find out who these Luchaks and Liberatskis were. Here is a Poznań project search for Stanislaus Polchinski. Now, Stanislaus was the father of Frank and Tom. But we also see that the mother of Frank and Tom was a Luchak which begins to tie the genealogical record to the census record. And we also see that Constanza Luchak's mother was a Liberatska, which ties the genealogical record even closer to the census record. Okay, let's extract some age and date information from the census record and see where it takes us. Let's look at Stefan's marriage in 1893. Note that based on the data for Stefan's wife Anna and Stefan's children, here we must be looking at a second marriage for Stefan. Here we see Stefan's first marriage and see that his parents were Franz Wuchak and Anna Liberatska. This means that Stefan was Constanza's younger brother. This makes Stefan Wuchak the uncle of Frank and Tom Polchinski, and all of Stefan's kids the cousins of Frank and Tom, and the uncles and aunts of my dad. 
We also see that Frank Lewaratsky was probably the cousin of Stefan Buchak, although there is currently no genealogical evidence to support this. Moving on from genealogical records, let's see what other information about our ancestors can be derived from old maps. We'll start by trying to find John Polchinski's home in 1930 at 756 10th Avenue in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Here's a Google map search for 756 10th Avenue but this doesn't seem to match up with whether Polchinski's and relatives were known to have lived in the 1930s. The problem is this. As noted on the Milwaukee County Historical Society website, in the early 1930s, Milwaukee changed street names and address numbers. So what we need to do is find out what the name of 10th Avenue was changed to at this time. Fortunately, the Society website shows street name conversions, with 10th Avenue becoming South 15th Street, but we still need to do the street address conversion. The Historical Society has scanned the address conversion records, but these records are not the easiest things to work with for a beginner. Fortunately, the staff at the Historical Society is quite helpful. It turns out that for this example, the first sheet on the conversion list is the one needed to convert these addresses, but there is still the challenge of finding particular addresses on this 40-page document. With the assistance of a very helpful researcher at the Historical Society, we scroll down this sheet, to find the address conversions we are looking for. With these modern addresses along 15th Street, we can now consult a modern map to find where these folks lived. Here we are back on the modern Google map, showing the location of the Konechny Polchinski residence in 1930. This house is right in the middle of the old Polish district of Milwaukee, so it seems to be right where we'd expect it to be. Zooming in, we see that unfortunately their house has been replaced by a Walgreens drugstore, which is confirmed by the Google Street View of the address. It is, however, possible to get a feel for the neighborhood back in the 1930s by examining old maps of the area. Here are the places on old maps of Milwaukee that we will be looking for. Here are some places that you can get old maps of Milwaukee. This list came from ChatGPT, which is an absolutely awesome search tool. Let's look at some old maps of Milwaukee to see where these Konechnys, Polchinskys, Wuchaks, and Liberatskys lived. Here we see a section of a 1923 map of Milwaukee centered on what was at the time a mostly Polish neighborhood. Those familiar with Milwaukee will recognize some classic landmarks of this area of the city. And here is 10th Avenue although we don't yet know where the addresses of interest lie along the street. Fortunately, there is a way to turn back the clock and see where all these folks lived back in 1930. With their very high level of detail, Sanborn maps are an essential tool when doing genealogical research on ancestors living in medium and large sized cities and towns in the U.S. Our new friend ChatGPT can provide several options on where to find 1930 Sanborn maps of Milwaukee. It turns out that these sources 
have Sanborn maps of Milwaukee only for the years 1894 and 1910. So we'll follow the 1910 map set. The general index for the Sanford map set we are using shows that we are interested in volume five. Zooming in on the volume five index shows the specific map sheets that lie along 10th Avenue. Going to map sheet 477 takes us to a map containing 10th Avenue. And zooming in on this map takes us to the addresses that we are looking for. Superimposing the modern Google map onto the Sanborn map, shows how things have changed over time. Let's pause our investigation of the Konechny Polchinski clan in Milwaukee for a moment and revisit how to find old maps of cities in the US. Possibly the best place to start this type of search is the U.S. Library of Congress. Let's follow ChatGPT's instructions on how to find maps at this source. Here is the LOC homepage where you start your search for maps. Clicking on the search button takes you to the maps section of the LOC collection. Unless you happen to be at the Library of Congress, make sure you will be searching for maps available online. As suggested by ChatGPT, scroll down the left column and click on Cities and Towns. Now scroll back up the page and click on United States. If you scroll all the way to the top of the page, you can see that what you are doing is continuously refining your search criteria. Now, clicking on United States brings up a list of states where you can scroll down to your state of interest. If you choose, say, Illinois, you get a list of cities and towns in Illinois. where you might select, for example, Chicago. Clicking on Chicago takes you to a selection of maps where you can refine your search even further. Now, anytime you want to get rid of a search criterion, just go to the top of the page and X out the criterion. Okay, but what if the Library of Congress doesn't have any good maps of your city of interest for the time period you are interested in? Well, your new friend ChatGPT can help you out here. But as mentioned, the Library of Congress is generally a good place to start your search. So what about Sanborn maps at the LOC? You can get back to the LOC homepage by Xing out criteria and then scrolling down to Sanborn Maps. You can then add criteria as you did before and then scroll around until you see a map of interest. Well, that was so much fun. Let's look at another example of how to use census records, genealogical records, and old maps to learn more about our ancestors. Again, we'll start with census records. For this 1910 census record from Milwaukee, we see John's dad, Tom, living with his parents, Stanislav and Anastasia. And we also see that back in 1910, 
a total of 12 people in the Konechny Polchinsky clan were all living together at 767 American Avenue. Comparing 1910 and 1930 census records, we see that most of the people in the Konechny Polchinsky clan were still all living under the same roof, albeit a different roof. And again, we see that during these times, households of 12 to 14 people was not uncommon. Now, it turns out that Joseph Konechny was Katarzyna's older brother, and Tom Polchinski, who was Katarzyna's future husband, was living with his future brother-in-law. So, where was Katarzyna living at this time? Here is Katarzyna, or Caddy, as she was known at the time, still living with her parents, John and Agnes, in 1910, who were all living with a total of 14 people at 1015 Fifth Avenue. Now, I have no idea who their Talagal housemates were, presumably some type of relatives, but that's a question for a different day. So here then are the addresses we are now looking for. But first we are going to need to consult some genealogical records to clarify an apparent inconsistency. As you may recall, the genealogical record shows Stanislaus Polczynski marrying Konstanza Wuczak in Poland in 1887. But the 1910 census record shows Stanislaus being married to some woman named Anastasia. So what's that all about? Well, the Milwaukee census record shows that Stanislaus and Anastasia were married for 23 years in 1910, which indicates that they were married to each other in 1887. And that matches the genealogical record marriage year for Stanislaus and Constanza. We also see that for both records, the bride and groom were about six years apart in age. And returning to the 1930 census, where we saw a neighborhood of Polchinskis, Wuchaks, and Liberatskis, it sure seems like Anastasia was, in fact, the same person as Constanza. With that problem solved, let's see where these folks lived in 1910. To do this, we already know that we need to deal with the address change issue for Milwaukee. So here are the street name changes from the Milwaukee County Historical Society website. Now, on to the address changes. Here we are back on the 40-page document we saw before, where we need to scroll around to find this address. Scrolling down the document with our newfound skills at searching these records, we find that 767 American Avenue is now 1965 South 15th Place. Switching to another address change document, we find that 1015 South Avenue is now 2361 South 10th Street. Back on Google Map, here is the Konieczny Polchinski clan territory of the early 1900s in the old Polish district of Milwaukee. Zooming in on the Google map to 1965 South 15th place and switching to the satellite image, we see that the Konieczny Polchinski house of 1910 has been torn down along with its neighbor at 1969 American Avenue. And switching to the 1910 Konieczny house at 2361 South 10th Street, it appears that this house has been torn down too. So it looks like we need to go back to the 1910 Sanborn maps to find these houses. First, let's try to find the missing 767 and 769 houses on a Sanborn map. 
Here we are back on volume 5 of the 1910 Sandboard Maps of Milwaukee, where we are looking for 767 American Avenue. Following American Avenue North, we will be looking at sheet 476. Zooming in on map 476, we see where the now missing 767 and 769 were located in 1910. And once again, we can now get a feel for how the neighborhood has evolved over the last 100 years. Okay, on to our next task. Now we will be looking for the missing 1015 Fifth Avenue house. It turns out that this will pose an interesting challenge that demonstrates the value of using old maps when learning more about your ancestors. Still on volume 5 of the Sanborn map set from 1910, we will now be looking at section 509. Here is the map of section 509, which contains the house we are interested in, and zooming in shows the house at 1015 Fifth Avenue. At this point, we need to address a small problem we have with the address conversion for 1015 Fifth Avenue. Back on the Google map, note the location of 2361 South 10th Street along Hayes Avenue. Now notice that in 1910, Hayes Avenue did not yet run all the way through this neighborhood, but we can project the future path of this street. Here we see the modern and old maps of the area side by side and lined up along Hayes Avenue with the locations of 1015 Fifth Avenue and 2361 South 10th Street as shown. What is pretty clear is that 1015 aligns well with 2359, with 2361 being a vacant lot in 1910 and on the Google map. Furthermore, the address conversion list contains no new 2359 address. This is pretty good evidence that 1015 South 5th Avenue actually became 2359 South 10th Street, not 2361 South 10th Street. So this is where Caddy lived in 1910. That's all well and good, but after expending this much energy and time on using census records, genealogical records, and old maps to learn more about our ancestors, we really need to address the question, so what? Well, the 1930 houses of the Konechnys, Polchinskis, and Wuchaks are gone. The Liberatsky house remains, which gives us an idea of what the neighborhood must have looked like 100 years ago and what type of houses 14 assorted relatives were packed into back then. The 1910 Konechny Polchinsky house is also gone, but again, we can still see this neighborhood and the type of houses that these 12 people lived in. But the house of Caddy and the 14 assorted relatives that lived in the house with her is still there, which in a way can bring us a little closer to those that have gone before us. Before we close out this discussion, let's check out a few more things that old maps can tell us. Here we see a 1901 map of Milwaukee by George Cram showing American Avenue and a park named Lincoln Avenue Park. But here's another map from 1901 by George Cram showing American Avenue being named Bismarck Avenue. 
Cram still names the street Bismarck in 1910, but this 1909 map by Kaspar shows the name of the street as American. Also note that the park at the lower right now has the name Kosciusko versus the old name of Lincoln Avenue Park. Now all maps after this period up to the renaming of this street as 15th place in the 1930s show the street as American Avenue. So this does raise the as yet unanswered question as to how Bismarck got his name on American Avenue on some of the early 1900s maps of Milwaukee. Here's another question raised by looking at old maps. Here is a 1965 map showing the future route of I-94 through the old Polish area of Milwaukee. And a 1972 map showing the same region. Note here the appearance of a short street named Polson. Here we see Polson Street again in 1999 and on Google Map. We know that Polson was one of several common contractions of Polchinski. So what is the relationship between the folks in the old Konieczny Polchinski clan territory and whoever Polchinski Street was named after? Furthermore, why exactly did the city of Milwaukee choose the name Polson for the new street along the route of I-94? Well, these are yet more interesting questions brought out by studying old maps. I hope you enjoyed this presentation on how to use census records, genealogical records, and old maps to learn more about your ancestors. Thanks for watching.